summertime. It's the most bountiful time of year. And that's why we love cooking up a barbecue. But what if we don't have the equipment to make stuff outside? Well, I've got a treat for you because we can get all those barbecue smoky flavors on the inside. That's what today's about. Barbecue inside for the outside. I got a sticky and sweet, delicious barbecue chicken, a wonderful herby goddess salad, and an oh-so-swirly strawberry shortcake. And don't think for a second I'm just gonna leave you with three dishes. I got tips and tricks to make your summertime even smoother. So get a plate and a foldy chair because it's barbecue time. Life can be a struggle, but a good meal doesn't have to be. We can make creative, nutritious, and inventive dishes that won't break the bank. We'll eat well and save money, because that's what we do. Welcome to Struggle Meals. Barbecued chicken. What if I told you I could show you how to get those barbecued flavors without a grill? That's exactly what I'm gonna show you. We're gonna make a peach and chipotle glazed chicken because chicken is fundamental at barbecue time. And peaches are sweet and chipotles are hot. And together that equals tangy, reduced, sticky sauce. That is what's fundamental about barbecue in the summer. We start right here with these peaches. We're gonna peel them because the skins don't really like to break down so well. Rather than just pour sugar and ketchup, let's use some whole ingredients. Peaches are in season. They are sweet, they are tangy. I feel like if you were doing this at a different time of the year, you could totally get away with pineapples or even canned fruit. So let's chop up these peaches because they are the base to our sweet and smoky glaze. So I'm just gonna try to work my way around the pit here. All right. This is all gonna get cooked down, so you don't have to get crazy. Get some nice chunks, it'll break down faster. Into our pot. These are chipotle peppers. They come in an adobo sauce. Pretty spicy. You can figure out so many creative uses for this. Salad dressings, taco seasoning. The aroma is totally crazy right now. We're gonna throw that right in. Pour a little bit of the adobo sauce in there too. That adobo sauce is packed full of flavor and we don't wanna waste it. Here we've got peach nectar. This is gonna help this all reduce down. Peach nectar is essentially the juice of peaches. It's incredibly sweet. It's pretty thick. It's delicious. Now we're gonna go into the packager and get a few more items. Dijon mustard, two soy sauce packets. This is gonna give us dark, dark color and gives us salt and mustard. It's easy to write off barbecue glazes or sauces as something that's just all sugar. It's not just sugar, it's tang, it's tart, it's sweet, it's sticky, it's scrumptious. Let's add some smoked paprika. It's the smoky paprika and the chipotle peppers that mimic the flames of a grill. We're gonna hit it with salt and pepper, just a little bit, and let's turn this on. Bringing it up to a boil, then turning it down to a simmer, letting it go for about 15 minutes or until some of that liquid's reduced down. The color of the peaches has changed, the aromas are fantastic, but how do we make this even more barbecue sauce-like? And the answer is a cornstarch slurry. You take your cornstarch and you go right in. Just kidding, you can't do that. That'll create all kinds of lumps. You take your cornstarch, you come right here like this. You take a struggle whisk, 7,500 and some water, and you work this together. You only have to put cornstarch into something directly once to know that it's a terrible idea. Talk about a lump that'll never get fully hydrated. That's what happens. Pour that in, that'll thicken almost immediately. Look at how it's hanging right there. Oh, we just... Smoky, spicy, tangy, sweet, and the viscosity of a perfect barbecue sauce. So good. Let's coat these chickens. Here, let's hit it with salt. These are chicken drumsticks. I love the handheldness of the chicken drumstick. They're perfect for outdoor eating. We're gonna take some of our barbecue sauce, not all of it, and put it on the chicken here so that we can get a nice mix all around. Oh, the aroma's fantastic. Let's lay our chicken out like this. When they're stacked up, they're gonna steam. That's not gonna mimic the flavors of an outdoor grill. We need to make sure it's all roughly the same height so that when we kiss it with the broiler, real things happen. 45 minutes in the oven, we're gonna rotate it about halfway through. All the sticky sugars that are on this glaze that we made here are gonna caramelize further down and reduce and give us the flavors of the outdoor grill while we're using our indoor kitchen. I'm gonna do the final little kiss under the broiler with peaches because grilled peaches are a classic summertime addition to your barbecue. Peach season is short, you gotta take advantage of it while it's here. All right, these are almost done. They look great. I'm gonna add some finishing touches and then return them to the broiler. 
Oh, crazy aromas. Let's finish this. We are moments away from enjoying a summer barbecue treat. Let's just get the broiler going. Heat's coming from the top. This is cooked through. So this is gonna give us that final sugary, caramelized browning that we're looking for. We saved a little bit of our barbecue sauce. So let's get it on the peaches here. Just a tiny bit of oil to aid in brownness and a crispiness. But it's this final pass underneath the broiler, the direct flame that interacts with the sugars that takes these flavors all the way home. Woo wee! Look at that char. Who needs a grill? Look at these beauties. Grab this gorgeous beauty right here. We'll put him like that. I feel happy. It's time for the herb garden. I love my herb garden because I paid for it once and I keep regrowing ingredients. Oh man, it's amazing. Just like putting this here and the aroma changes. Peach and chipotle glazed chicken coming in at $1.97. I gotta tell you, I'm going for the peach first. Here we go. Yes! Yes! What about the chicken? Oh, so delicious. We've done it. We've hacked together a piece of software that breaks all the rules. That is tangy and sweet and spicy and surprisingly savory. I'm eating a piece of grilled fruit. You'd never think that it would be this delicious. It's more than just tangy, sweet, and spicy. These flavors are turning into feelings, and I feel a carefree, fun summertime. Next up, we're gonna learn how to slice our favorite summertime treat. Watermelon! It's the quintessential summer fruit. It's big, it's bold, it's juicy, it's sweet, but it can be a little unwieldy to cut. So here are my tips on how to slice it up. First up, wedges. Chop off the end and flip it onto the flat side. Now you've turned a round object into something stable that you can cut. Now cut it in half from top to bottom. Lay each half down on the largest cut surface and slice it in half again the long way. Going the short way, cut one inch wedges, keeping the rind intact. Classic wedges, easy to hold slices for efficient watermelon eating. Sticks, hold the melon steady and cut it in half. Now lay each half cut side down flat. Cut into one inch strips both vertically and horizontally, like a chessboard. Great for grab and go, or when the kids outnumber the adults and it's easy for their little hands to hold on to. Cubes, compact, juicy, and they save space. Once again, create the flat side. Standing it on its side, follow the curves of the watermelon to cut the rind off. Split the slab into two equal parts. Starting the long way, slice into one inch strips. Rotate your knife the short way and slice into one inch cubes. Voila! We have perfect one inch cubes for easy eating and easy storage. No matter how you slice your watermelon, you should take advantage of it while it's in season. Enjoy it any way you slice it. Make sure you stay tuned. I got more summertime dishes coming up. Let's make a potato salad. It completes our summer barbecue and it gives us all the zing and acidity that we look for in a salad, but in something that doesn't break down over time, which means you could take it on a picnic. And because it's so forgiving to multiple ingredients, we can accentuate these in-season green beans, which are abundant, affordable, and incredibly delicious right now. We're gonna add a little salt to our water here. So I'm just gonna quickly blanch our green beans. This is a quick blanch. I mean, I am not going for soggy here. 90 to 120 seconds. They get super vibrant green. These are gonna be even more delicious. Now I'm gonna stop the cooking. Very important that we have an ice bath. This is gonna lock in so much vitality and color, which is gonna make these look so beautiful when I have this salad later. You might be thinking to yourself, gee, I gotta get this water and get this ice just for that one step. We're gonna use the water to cook the potatoes too. So this is like, why wouldn't you elevate the dish when you've already got these things set up? So we've got some red potato here. You want a waxy potato, not a starchy potato. It's gonna hold up better in the salad. I'm just trying to get like roughly equal sized pieces here. I would say vertically twice and then, and then in half this way. These are beautiful. I'm going skin on. I love the color. My potatoes are washed. I love the fiber that's in those skins. And I'm gonna cook these until a knife can like pierce into the center with minimal resistance. All right, so here's our green beans. Crisp, you, you hear that? This is for you up here at the mic, you ready? Our green beans are crunchy, they're fantastic. The color has come out. I've had them in the ice bath for two or three minutes. I'm gonna pull them out now because I don't want them to get waterlogged. 
and that will happen if they hang out in here way too long. We're gonna make a dressing for our potato salad and I'm gonna go with the green goddess. Green, what does that mean? It means herbs. What is our focal herb? Well, today it's basil. You know, this can be hard to find throughout the year, but in the dead of summer, basil grows like a weed. I'm not worried too much about the stems. I'm going for the leaves, I'm pulling some stems with it. Parsley, on the other hand, I'm totally happy to use the stems of. Those stems are great. Try to roll this up into like a ball as best you can, and then you can chop it up. We can do the tip to toe. I'm a big advocate of keeping your knives sharp. A dull knife, more than in any other situation, will macerate these herbs rather than slice through it. And you'll see a lot of green on your board. If you see a lot of green on your board, time to sharpen. Basil and parsley, semi-chopped, coming in. The chives, Let's cut the chives in half. I kind of like to guillotine the knife across and back. So you come back like this. Angled blades slice across, right? Blunt blades go straight down. You have to push harder. You have to rely more on a sharp blade. But an angle, what a difference. Let's get a little garlic in there. That fresh pepperiness that we get. Potatoes are ready. Let those cool. Let's get some lemon zest happening right into here. This is free flavor. It is so bright and zesty. We'll cut this in half now. I'm just gonna squeeze these right into the bowl. Let's add in some sour cream. Three packet mayos. Two, three. So now we got fatty tangy. Let's get a little spiciness in there. How about some packet drawer mustard? There we go. Anchovies in a jar. I love this. I can pick out salt on steroids whenever I need them. We'll give it a little chop. I feel like so many good dressings have anchovies in there. Anchovies are so much more than just salt. They're like an umami funkiness. People taste this and they go, what is that? Why is it so good? It's the anchovy. So this is looking pretty good right here. If you don't have an immersion blender or a food processor, that's fine. You know, try your best chopping the herbs. I'm gonna see if I can get it a little greener. By transferring this to a jar, it's gonna be a lot easier to blend. Now, we've got a green goddess. Let's uh, chop these green beans. Let's get them all in a nice line. I'm looking to make these about the same size as the potatoes, so that's like thirds in my case. Potatoes going in. A little celery for some crunch, a little scallion. And the dressing, here she comes. Oh, beautiful. So pretty, look at that. Food coloring can't touch this, honestly. This is nature's finest. Multiple shades of green. Gotta love it. A buck 23 for our potato salad, which accentuates the green bean, which is in season right now, and my favorite summertime herb, basil. This could so easily be something that only looked beautiful but didn't taste great, but that's not the case here. Like, it's really, really tasty. I mean, it's almost got this like cheesy, funky umami thing happening with the vegetables that we know we need during barbecue season. Between the herbs and the green beans, this is a celebration of summer's best offerings. We're gonna celebrate another summer fruit with a dessert. That's coming up next, but first a challenge. It's time for a struggle challenge. Let's see what inquisitive things you have for me today. All right, I just got five corn on the cob and we aren't that big on corn on the cob, but we eat corn anyway. What a mouthful. Any ideas on how to best use them? That's a great question. Let's see what else you got in the fridge. Corn on the cob. Immediately I'm thinking of like Mexican style street corn, which is elotes, right? But you don't want the corn on the cob. So if we grill the corn and then mix it up with the mayo, the cheese and the spice, cut it off the cob, then we've got esquite. Let's see what we got in this kitchen to make it happen. Chili powder, we gotta top it with cilantro. And then looks like we got some kind of fresh cheese here. We're gonna make a little sauce that we're gonna mix this up in. So sour cream, butter and mayo. Let's see what that does. Limes here, get a little bit of raw onion happening. First thing we gotta do is cook these up. Fast way to shuck it is to just kind of, <laughs> that didn't work. Rip the top as hard as you can. Let's get some flames happening here. I don't have a grill, but I do have open flames. Fire and corn is elemental, right? This is gonna give us smoky summertime loving right now. If you don't have a gas stove, put these under the broiler on a sheet tray and maybe rotate them every three minutes. This one's beautiful. Here we go. I love the charred blackness you get from a direct flame and it smells great. All right, we need a bowl so we can cut all the corn off the cob. Now the corn is high up, right? If I don't have this here, I'm down here and I have to get on a steeper angle with the knife. So we'll do that. 
take it right off the cob. Hit this with a little bit of butter because you can't go wrong with a little bit of butter. Now we're gonna come in with mayo. The idea is to create a creamy encapsulation of East corn kernel. Mayo, butter, fantastic. Slice up a tiny bit of cilantro here. Cut just a little bit of onion here. So this is a chili powder and I can taste a little bit of cumin in it. It's definitely spicy. So it's probably like cayenne, maybe the tiniest bit of cumin. Sounds great to me. Let's squeeze some lime in there just for balance. A Little bit of salt. Street food, straight up. I'm loving the way this looks. What this is, I'm not entirely sure. We're gonna find out. This is cotilla, briny as could be. So come with that cheese like that. Now you hit it again with some hot stuff. Spoon in, lime right there. Individually blackened kernels of corn. Colors, texture, that's a 10. It's a 10. So check that out. 10 on looks, 10 on taste. This is a perfect score. Find me a better corn off the cob dish. I'll wait, really. Thanks for this challenge. It's a winner. It's time to complete the summer barbecue, and that means something sweet. A struggle take on a strawberry shortcake. Strawberry swirl shortcake. Let's start off this dish with a little bit of buttermilk. If you have buttermilk on hand, obviously you should use it, but I don't often have it on hand, so here's a little hack to make instant buttermilk. One cup of milk and a squeeze of lemon. A little stir, setting that aside, letting that continue to curdle. Now our dry ingredients. Three cups of flour, baking powder, baking soda, salt. Mixing till well combined. Very satisfying. Now we've got to cream our butter and sugar. Normally, this is done in a mixer because it's a little bit intensive. Uh, this is a struggle kitchen. We're gonna do it by hand. And the first thing you've got to do to set yourself up for success is make sure the butter's been sitting out for two hours. This has to be soft. Butter goes in, sugar. We're just gonna mash up the butter first just to try to get the process on its way in the cube. You got to cream the butter and the sugar because it makes them light and fluffy. You want light and fluffy? I want light and fluffy cream your butter and sugar. So now that the butter and sugar have combined, we've gotta mix it up even harder and get some air in there. We're gonna use the Struggle Stand Mixer 7500. So I'm just like pushing down and scraping here. Just work this like you're mixing eggs and you'll realize you don't need to have a high powered expensive machine to make this happen. Look at this, looks great. Let's get eggs in here one at a time. Egg number two, third egg. All right, at this point, I can definitely use grandma's whisk, vanilla for flavor, and some yogurt. This is for richness and tang. This is looking pretty good. Now, all we have is the power of human. So we gotta do this in stages here, just so that we don't burn out the motor. You know what I'm talking about? So I'm putting about a third of my flour, and check out our buttermilk, it has curdled quite a bit. Let's put like half of that. Nice, coming in with a little more flour. All the flour's in, here comes the rest of the milk. Homogeny has been achieved once again. All right. Ugh. So this looks really well incorporated and nice, but remember, we're trying to get a strawberry swirl thing happening here. So I'm gonna take a little bit of our batter out so that I can make that gorgeous, colorful topping. So strawberries are in season right now, which means they're more cost effective, but they're still pretty pricey. So I'm gonna stretch the flavor by adding a little bit of strawberry jam inside the cake. Brilliant. Got a cup of jam. Obviously it makes sense for this to be strawberry because we're using strawberries. Mixing this up. Not worrying about the swirl right now. Beautiful, look at that. Here we go. We're gonna create layers. About half of our batter right now. Smooth it all out here. All right, coming in with our strawberry layer now. Spreading that out. Now to make the swirl, we're gonna dollop the rest of our batter on top of the strawberry layer. Let's swirl. Something like that. That way and this way. Just a grid pattern. Yet another gorgeously colorful summertime dish. Let's bake this one up. My cake is cooling, so I'm working on my toppings. Some strawberries. These strawberries are fresh. We're gonna let them, you know, sit on top and live their best lives. In order to extract even more strawberry flavor, we're gonna macerate these. And that is not a physical act of mashing, but it is an acidic and sugary solution that extracts flavor. We'll cut a lemon in half, we'll get that over our strawberries. Let the acid start drawing the strawberry moisture out. We're gonna hit this with some sugar. This process right here is just gonna make this extra juicy. 
We're gonna get even more strawberry flavor. It's already happening, you can see it, look at that. Set this aside, let time do its magic. So let's get some whipped cream going. Whip the cream. Oh man, my forearm's killing me right now. Ah! Let's get a little powdered sugar in there. All right, I think we're there. This is completely cooled. Let's make it happen. Strawberries. Look at how juicy they look. 80 cents a serving, what a great way to end a summer barbecue, don't you think? I'm gonna bite into this, it looks amazing. Mm. You know what I'm finding is that it's really good. Whipped cream and macerated strawberries are so delicious. It's just easy going, super moist, delicious, light. This is just the perfect end to a summer's day. Summer barbecue, that's what today was all about. Bringing it all together for an outdoor feast that you made inside. We had that sticky and delicious chicken, that oh so herby salad, and the strawberry swirly love to finish it all off. All these things are summertime because food is memory and memory is life. And life is affordable when you use Struggle Meals recipes. Welcome to Frankie's Corner, the spot where I answer your questions. I have a steak for the grill, and I'm looking for a great marinade for it. Any suggestions? Every cut of beef is completely different. You've got fatty cuts and lean cuts that are totally tender. And if I were to cook those on the grill, I'd just use salt and pepper. For the other cuts, hard-working muscle areas, breaking it down with some kind of a marinade makes a lot of sense. You gotta have acid to break down those fibers. Salt, flavor, and then you can grill it. But if you really wanna be pro, skip the marinade on the tough cuts altogether and just braise it. It's gonna be so much more tender. 